Hello everybody, welcome back, and I think we're just going to hop into it. We're going to take care of those spoils bags, drops, uh, now, whatever you'd call them, drops, rewards, I don't know. Whatever the hell comes out of those bags, we're going to try and take care of them. So I'm going to need trash cans, and I'm not sure how many I will need, but let's, I don't know. <clears throat> Let's make like three extra because we already have one down below. That would mean we're going to need a couple servos. Uh, get me four extra. Still crafting away some 64s, by the way. 64 case. I crafted five. I'm going to have a whole new set of 64s uh, when those are done. We'll get to that. We're getting ahead of ourselves. That should be enough servos. I'll uh, just cancel that because it is using the furnace. That's something I do want to touch on too. Uh, these furnaces sh share recipes, so it does kind of bog down the crafting when it's trying to do something and the recipes already and the furnace is already being taken by another recipe. So that's something I should address soon too. Is just make multiple furnaces and things that um, things that overlap each other should be on a separate furnace. Okay, so I did kind of clean this up a bit. We had a whole backlog of stuff. I just grabbed a bunch of XP out of the tanks, put it on my character. As you can see, I've got 150 XP uh, levels now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we've processed all of our spoils bags. We had 10 chests full of spoils bags, and we've pretty well dumped them all. Looks like even a backlog. All of these chests are full of crap. They're all full of crap. So, here comes the fun part. I gotta look through them, kinda decide what I wanna keep, and what I just wanna straight up trash can. So I brought a chest with me, just so I can kinda pick out stuff that I should just junk, like that. And w uh, you can see I'm getting like rotten fresh, or uh, rotten flesh, and things of that nature that I think I'm gonna run this pipe straight back into the barrels and then we'll have an exit for imports but we'll get to that we'll get to that so i think i'm just gonna go through what i want to junk and we're gonna junk it so i'll be back i'm gonna pick out stuff that i'm just gonna throw in this chest and mark for a trash cannon oh by the way i found out what this staff of traveling does yeah it's kind of cool you can kind of bounce around with it teleport around I don't think I'd want to keep them though. I mean, it looks like it charges on RF, so if you had. What is that thing? Um, from Thermal Expansion. There is a charger here somewhere. Redstone sawmill, blah, 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 blah. Somewhere, somewhere. Energetic confuser. That's it. That'll charge items, so I'm assuming. I'm assuming you could charge uh, the stuff of traveling in there. Would you need more than one? Don't think so, maybe. I'm gonna trash can them. Because I don't care about them. Those will go in the bin too. Still sorting, still sorting. Alright, I'm back, and I pretty well got everything I want to trash can. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. All this stuff we'll just throw into the bin. I can build a builder's wand anytime I need, and division sigils. I really don't need more than one, it has 250 some uses. I could always grab one if I needed it. That's pretty well my theory behind trashing all this stuff. I don't care about the open blocks radio. This donation station's kind of interesting. It's just a little pig that sits there. Don't really care about it. That'll go into the bin too. Horse armor goes into the bin. It all goes into the bin. But I decided that um, I got some neat stuff. I'll go through this in a bit. But these are going to go into another barrel upstairs because I have a lot of these three things. So we're going to put those into barrels. But I also got, um, oh, four things. I want this in barrels too. We also got some ender lily seeds. These are pretty awesome. Grow your ender, um, you grow ender pearls. Those are really cool. Um, what else did I get? Some silly glasses that just look funny. Interesting. 
And some of these. Yeah. I think they kind of point towards sound? Or something? I think they kind of point towards sound. It's really hard to see with them. But they're kind of cool. Like, I've never seen these before. They must point towards noise. Yeah, they have to point towards noise. Kinda cool. Kinda cool. Useless, but kinda cool. So we got a couple of neat things. I'm gonna throw these in the ME uh, system right now. These I actually don't care about. We can just trash can those glasses. Uh, ender seeds. Yeah. I'm gonna need a couple more barrels down there. I'm not sure. You know, three, four. I've got pretty well everything else I'm gonna need. Probably some storage buses. And yeah, let's start setting up the system. So, what I think I'm pretty well gonna do is rip up this current piping and start over. Not all of it, not all of it has to go, but I do want to rip up a decent amount of it and just route it in a more intelligent manner. So I'll be back once I got this set up a little bit more. Alright, so I think I got everything set up to the trash can, and I only needed two more servos. Just needed two more servos for the junk I wanted to trash. Um, uh, maybe. Did I get the rod and the... Oh. I missed one. Okay, I need one more servo. Change my mind. One more servo. Oh, uh, item duct. Servo, and... What did I miss? I think it was just the staff of traveling that I don't need a hundred of. Whitelist staff of traveling. Okay, on whitelist, good. Okay, let's connect these now. I think that should be okay. I think set the whitelist. If there's anything I missed, we'll we'll see our drives piling up. So this will still be our spoils bag activator. Um What I'm gonna do is run all these guys on output. So this might take me a little while to set up. But what I'm gonna do is just output all these pipes straight back into um, straight back into this pipe pretty well. So everything I want will flow through into the barrels. Everything I want trashed will get trashed. And then we'll set up a catch-all, which is already set up. I mean, this obsidian chest... Creeper blow it. This obsidian chest is a catch-all. Anyways, I mean, it's set to uh, dense mode, so it'll be the last place it checks. And anything that we do want to keep will get pulled into there. And I'm going to go get um, a precision import this time, just so we pull items out quicker. Well, do I even care? I don't know. The basic import will be fine. Oh, it's on our last 64k. We made four 64ks during that time. Not bad. Not bad with 48 processors. It's doing a good job. Oh, my import's done. Import and I need cable. I only have 11 left. Should make a pile of those. <clears throat> Alright, so this catch-all chest will pretty well just import into the network directly. I might want to move it too. Yeah, I think I'm going to move it out. Just one. Set it to red. And lay the chest down. Perfect. So I'll just pull continuously into the network anything that we pretty well want to keep. We'll end up in there. Um, yeah, so let me output all these chests. This might take a while. There's a lot of crap in them. I'm gonna need quite a few servos. 
and we'll output them straight into this line pretty well. Doesn't matter, it'll all find its way through the pipe system. It's all connected. So, let me clear out these chests. Alright, so our pile of chests is gone. And now that we have it all sorted out and everything's going where we think it should go, it should all be perfectly good now. Yeah, it should all be perfectly uh, working now. Sorry, it's lost in thought there. Kept the same setup as before. Mob farm comes through. It finds its trash can. Of, or finds its filter in the trash can, if applicable. If not, it'll go up to the chest. And if it does, I mean, actually, if not, it'll go up to the barrels. And if the barrels don't have a home for it, it'll go up to the chest. And the chest is slowly importing into the network. Slowly importing. If it's a spoils bag, it'll find this whitelist go into this buffer chest. I did. You don't have to have this chest here, you can go straight to an activator, but an activator only holds nine bags, and if you ever get backed up, it'd probably be nice to have this buffer there. The activator right clicks the bags on default setup, I didn't change anything, all it did was change it to import through the back. Uh, it's going to right click bags into a chest, and I have a server in here just pulling it out, throwing it into the same pipe system. So that's the whole spoils bag setup now. It's going to find its way to a chest, if it has no home, into the network. So that's all done. Spoils bags are finally taken care of. And let me just drain some more of this XP while I'm here. I didn't ever consider myself as an XP tank, but you know what? Why not? <laughs> I'll just be an XP tank too. Okay, um... So my drives should be done. Yes, they are. So a couple things I want to get right now. Uh, first, let's dump our inventory. We can pretty well leave me those and those, and the rest we can dump. Okay, so a couple things I want to get to make use of these 64Ks somewhat properly. And let's go to the Applied Energistics tab. Scroll up, please. I don't know why it won't scroll up. Anyways, we'll do it this way. Terminal's stuck on there. So what I'm going to want is uh, a partition editor and an MEIO port. So let's get this stuff crafted up. Partition editor. It's pretty well exactly what it sounds like if you have a, if you've um, ever worked with computers. That's exactly what it is. It edits partitions of your drives. Partition editor. I need a crafting table and everything else we should have. As soon as the matrix decides to craft, should be good now. Oh, I need glass. Just wait for this glass to cook up. Do do do. One. And two. Partition editor. Uh, and now we need an ME IO. I'm gonna need two ME drives for this. A basic processor. So let's request a processor. Any drive, what do we need for this? We're gonna need four more processors. So we're gonna need four more of these. Uh, two chests, an iron and glass. That should be all perfect. What do you have chests? I should really make a redstone furnace because the sand recipe is sharing my processor recipe. I think that's enough glass. Let's get these processors cooking. And this might be why I'm hanging up. Silicon. Should be turning into processors. Perfect. Now ME drive. Are we good to go? One and two more processors. And 
to. Here's my drives. Um, now what did I need? The I/O. You should be good to go now. Great. So the partition editor is like the pattern editor. It does not need to be connected, but the I/O port does need to be connected. So we'll put the I/O port there. We'll put the ME partition e editor in the middle. Um, and now I think we're good to go. Let's grab our 64K drives. I might want one more drive too. Two more processors. So what we're going to do with these guys is set them up for... Because I mean... One uh, 64k storage holds like 8,000 odd stacks of one item. If you have 63 types of item, it's like 4,000 odd stacks of 63 types. So, yeah, I think I said that and it makes sense fine. If you have 63 types of items, it'll keep accumulating those 63 types until you hit 4,000 odd stacks. If you only have one type, it'll hold 8,000 some stacks of that one type. Uh, how's my ME drive? Perfect. We have a second drive if we want it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is see our blocks. Block of. These things we're going to be accumulating constantly over time. Like you just seen we just gained a block of iron. Like these will never stop producing. So I think I want to store these on a 64k. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab one of each. Just like we're setting up a whitelist on anything else. Basically what we're doing right now is we're whitelisting it for certain things. Emerald. Bronze. What do I have bronze? Well, I'm not going to be producing a lot of bronze, so... I didn't even know I had 26 blocks of bronze. That's a lot. Um, block of quartz. Yes, we'll take that. I also had one more type of quartz. Certus quartz blocks. Alright, so now we're going to take our partition editor. We're going to input our 64k. It has nothing in it, so you can format it. It's fine. Configured partition based on currently stored items. You can imagine what that does. We can pull a drive out and basically whitelist it for those items only. And that's what we're going to do with the 64k. We're going to whitelist it for these blocks only. And I don't think we're going to be running out of space anytime soon. If necessary, there is always a fix. And if it doesn't find room on this drive for your items, like if, you, if you're if you going to use this, if it doesn't find room on this drive for these items, it'll put it elsewhere. So, you're never out of luck. Um, precision, fuzzy, you do have precision mode. I want it on precision. If you go with fuzzy, you have fuzzy options. And you have whitelist or reject list, whitelist, blacklist. Then I'm going to format the drive. So partitioned, allowed, precise. This drive is only going to allow these items, and I think it'll even prioritize it, especially if I set this up to be uh, ME storage priority. So this guy is now partitioned for those precise items, and we could probably see this in action if I throw the quartz in. It should go to that one unless I have to set the priority higher. So let's go plus one on the priority. I'll block a coal. Why is this not going there? It should go there, right? Did I do something wrong here? It's formatted for these specific items. I mean, I did set the priority higher. Am I doing something wrong here? Let's go priority 1, and let's set you to priority negative 1. If I put a block of iron in, will you go in there? No. 
Let me try giving it a quick reset. Block of tin? Nope. Let me try it in this fashion. Let's just put these drives in there. Just set the priorities to one, make them even. I was thinking the priority would work, but apparently not. So let's see, if I grab all the blocks of iron... Maybe I'll have to do it like I do with the barrels, just make sure it's clear. Now we have room. Something already arrived on there. What arrived in there? Is there a way I could see? Well, we transferred the data to the network, so let's see. happens if I put a block of iron. Now it's arriving in the right place. So I don't know why the priority wasn't working, but it's working now. So let me um, pull out these blocks, put them back in, and they'll always arrive in the 64k first. So let me do that really quick. Alright, so that's all done. Now our partition is totally done. 14 out of 63 types. And I think we got all the blocks. 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13... 14. I'm missing one. What am I missing? Uh, let me pull the drive out see really quick. Now we got it all there. I just missed placing one in. I think it's all there. I'm okay with that for now. But the reason why I made this I.O. port was to kind of show you how you blank a drive. I mean, what I can do is just pull the drive out, shift right click it, and I'll destroy the drive. I don't want to do that. Let's say I wanted to transfer all these 1Ks into the network and hold on 64Ks. What I'm going to do is make sure this is on transfer data to network. It'll move the drive from this side to the output when ready, if you want it to do that. And we could throw it in. So. There's certain things you want to keep on one case, like things you have a very tiny amount of, um, and you have, yeah, basically that. Basically, things you only have a tiny amount of, maybe like a stack or two max you want on one case. So this is something you can be really particular about, and you could whitelist all these one case for certain things. Um, there's so much I could whitelist on one case, like saplings, that type of stuff I could have whitelisted on one case but what you do is you pull it I could give you an example I don't care if I throw it all into the network put it in here it's gonna transfer it all to the network it's already done transferred Boop. you have an empty 1k and you can see it filled up some of our 1ks and what I think is happening here it's prioritizing this ME drive block over this one even though I did have the priorities changed, it's still doing it by default. Not sure what the mechanic there was. I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but it's doing that. Anyways, um, this is something I could fine tune. Like if there's something I could think of that I want on a 64k that I know I'm going to have tons of, I could do that. I could even phase out those barrels and just keep them on 64ks. There's not much I could think of. I mean, this dust, all these all these pieces of gold ore and crushed copper ore and all that, I could whitelist them for a 64k, but they're going to be phased out soon enough anyway. It's like the smeltery is going to be uh, processing those when it gets around to it. There's a big backlog for the smeltery. A very big backlog. Yeah, I'm okay with this. This is done. This 64k is going to hold all of our ores. So if someone pulls that out and destroys it, well, that's going to suck to be us. But that one drive is holding all our ores and it's not even a quarter full. 
Okay, so that takes care of that. We're all done with storage for a long time. We have a drive rack full of 64Ks, and you could even go higher than that. Uh, extra utilities adds a 256K, a 1 million, a 4 million, a 16 million. Yeah. This 16K or 64K holds like 500,000 items if you only have one type in there. So you can imagine how that scales up. But I'll be back in a few moments. I think, yeah, I think we're gonna play with some Dartcraft maybe. We'll see how we get started in Dartcraft. Yeah, so give me a few moments. I'm happy with where we're sitting at now. Spoils bags are done. Storage is done. No longer have to worry about that. I think I'm gonna empty this drive though. And I'll be back. Oh, one thing. I. I forgot to totally mention this, but if you're interested to see what's on a drive, you could always throw it into your partition editor, click partition storage based on what's currently stored, and it'll show you all the items on there. So yeah, you can do that if you're really curious what's on a uh, specific drive. Like this guy, we can find out what we have on it right now. This is the exact blocks we have stored on this current drive. Well, not this one, because this one's set up to a whitelist. But you get the idea. You know, come to think of it, there's going to be a lot to cover in Darkcraft, and we're already like 25 minutes into this video, so I think I'm going to do it next video, and there's nothing I'm going to... I'm just going to jump into Darkcraft. Like, I'm not going to delay it anymore. I do want to start playing with it. So I'm going to jump to Darkcraft straight off the next video. But for now, I'm going to... Um, start making a tesseract to get my slime farm, or not my slime farm, to get my blaze farm online without running a long conduit there. Tesseracts are really cool, and they're a lot of fun to use. So let's start with a tesseract. Tesseract. So you need the frame to begin with. I'm sure most of you know how to craft this, but you need hardened glass, enderium, and diamond. Enderium is made with pyrothium dust and enderium blend. How we get pyrothium dust is like so. So there's something we're going to need here, and that's uh, sulfur. And I think the best way to get sulfur... Let's see, pulverizer. I think the sag mill would do a better job. I could pulverize blaze rods. Induction smelter. Soul sand and netherrack. No. Sag mill. Yeah, I think my best, best chance for sulfur is just to pulverize some blaze rods. And I think I'm fine with that. So I'm going to pulverize some blaze rods, get some sulfur. Actually, one thing I can do while I'm waiting for the sulfur is get the blend ready, and that's tin, shiny, and resonant ender. So I'm going to need some ender pearls. Um, I think 16 is enough for one, if I remember correctly. So we're going to need two tesseracts. So I'm going to smelt up a couple stacks of these ender pearls in the magma crucible, and that'll make us enderium. Uh, we're gonna need some tin. Uh, get me a stack of tin. Thank you. Um, what else was it? Enderium blend. Tin and shiny. Shiny, um... 16. Alright, so we got our shiny and our tin. Enderium is crafting. Well, not crafting, Enderium is smelting. And that's going to flow out in resident ender form. Which we're going to make another portable tank, actually, to output that. No, we don't need, actually. We could output right into a bucket, which works for me. We could fill up our bucket in the transposer. One and two. Let's get some of the shiny pulverized. It's just about done. Okay, I gotta pulverize up the shiny and tin, and I'll see you soon. Alright, so we're ready with all our materials. Uh, you take your tin, your shiny, and your enderium. Uh, resident ender, not enderium. This is enderium. I'm just gonna get as much as I can. Perfect. 
So we got 32, we're gonna need some more ender pearls. And now we're gonna need some of this dust. Pyrothium, I think it's called. Pyrothium dust. This is the stuff. And I'm missing pulverized coal, so let's grab some coal. Uh, request one stack of coal. Forgot to pulverize this. Now we need to let the coal pulverize. Boring. I know. I know, I know, I know. But we do need this um, resident, or more resident ender, because I think I need how much? Tesseract. And you better believe there's a way to uh, automate Tesseract production. We'll get to it sooner or later. Usage. No, R. There we go. We need 1,000 to fill up a Tesseract, so that's too much. Start at 1,000, and it's filling up buckets. Damn it. That's okay, we could put that in and go to fill mode. There we go. So we have 2,000, that's enough to fill up our Tesseracts. Two Tesseracts is what we're aiming at right now. How's our coal? We might have enough. Yeah, we have enough. Uh, one... And Endurium Blend, not Endurium Blend, uh, Sulfur, or Rothium Dust, perfect. Let's grab our Blend. Oh, I fail typing right now. Let's grab our Blend and our Pyrothium Dust. We should have pretty well exactly what we need with two extra dust. And that'll smelt up our Endurium. I think it's two to one. Pretty sure it's two to one. Yep, two to one. So that'll be exactly what we need. We'll let the Enderium fall into the system, and we'll be back once we're done uh, smelting away the Enderium. I guess we don't have to wait too much longer. We already have enough for one. Enderium. Three, four. Tesseract. Right there. There's our first frame. We'll have to get a second one soon enough. We can throw this guy in on... Oh, you were in the right mode. Don't know why I can't change the mode. Maybe it's because it's already filling. Our Enderium should be done enough for a second Tesseract. There we go, we got our two frames ready to go. Throw our dust back in there. Oh, there's our one full Tesseract. Now this is what? Uh, silver and bronze. Well, good thing I had those bronze blocks laying around. One tesseract. And there we have enough for a second one. thought it was a th Oh, there we go. I had it on the wrong mode because I clicked it. Alright, so how we set these guys up, let me go downstairs, and Tesseracts can transport everything, uh, liquids, items, and power. And it does have a max per face, I think it's 400 or 600 RF max per side, so you can have 6 pipes in there, and you can max out the capacity for power. Um, where would I want this hooked up? I think I'll just have it on this 10,000 line. I'd even put it up here. These Tesseracts do look pretty damn cool. Yeah, how about up there? I like that. Anyways, right click on your Tesseract and you get your normal thermal expansion screen. And you could have, if you're using this on a server, you'd probably want it unrestricted or owner only. Doesn't matter to me because this is like a private game. Redstone control configuration. So we want to. Uh, block items, block fluid, we want to send energy only. Uh, send mode. We're just sending energy. Okay, so now we want it on... We'll just call this RF power. I think I have to set the frequency first. RF power, set frequency, save frequency. Saving it just puts it in a list so you can select it at any time. So RF powers frequency 1, set it, save it, good to go. 
This thing's now transmitting power. Now we just need our second tesseract, which should be done. Indeed it is. Tesseract frame, shift click that, and boop. There's our second tesseract. Let's go place this guy down. Up on over here, and where's my cell? It should be... I think it's right here. Close guess. Oh, the bad news is I can't jump out now without making a mess. I have to make a mess. Alright, so we're just going to place our tesseract down right on top of the cell, make sure the cell is set to input from the top. Perfect. Tesseract's on top, just click your frequency that we saved with the save button and set it. This guy should now be receiving power once we set this up properly. And you're on receive only energy, so let's see. Should be getting power. Unless I screwed something up, which is a possibility. Oh, we're getting power. Okay, no screw-ups, we're getting power. That's what I wanted to see. Now that cell will always get power from that tesseract draining our line. So now we can have our blaze farm on all the time. No reason not to have it on. As soon as it kicks in, there we go. Blaze Farm is now operational, full time, as long as we have the mob essence to support it, which we won't. That tank will run out far quicker than our blazes will. I think we'll spawn around, I don't know exactly, I'd, I'd guess around 50 to 100 blazes before those tanks are up. That's my guess. But now is the real wrapping up time. Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with what we did today. It didn't seem like much, but Storage is now completely alleviated. Last episode we compressed everything, this episode we took care of our spoils bags, and we totally upgraded our storage. This will not run out anytime soon. <laughs> if it runs out then we're doing something wrong, that's about all I can say. We have to reconsider how we're storing items. Look at that, Blaze Farm is up and running, fully operational, I love it. Let's go take a look before we wrap up. I like that glass pipe. I don't. It's just such a little thing, but I really like watching the blazes fall and get mushed up by the activator. Yeah, that looks really neat, especially up against the sky. But, like I said, this is where I'll wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you all next time.